time to talk about what's going on in America. It's time to talk about what's going on in the workforce and in the homes of the American middle class. It's time to talk about the status and the future of today's economy. It's time to talk labor with your host, Jerry Williams Sr. To him growing up, now he's a big boy, at ATU Local 241, Tommy Sam. Tommy, good to <laughs> see doing? you, buddy. Good, good to, to see, see you, Jerry. <laughs> good to yeah. be here. You, you know what, you, um, you know, when people say that uh, you jump down, what do they say, when I jump down, I hit the ground running. You hit the ground running when you got elected. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, gotta, <laughs> absolutely. you come into a lot of, you've been doing a lot of stuff yeah. over the, over the um, past few months. You just hit the ground in, in, in March. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. And you took off. When did you take office? We took office, well, we were sworn in March 10th. March 10th? March 10th. And um, so you guys, you guys took over in uh, March 10th. Um, did, um, and uh, you had been in, your, your local had been in trusteeship for uh, quite, a, quite a long time. Four years. Four years, four long years. That's in the past, but you know, that's illegal. But right. the, the, you know, it's in the past. Right. <laughs> We're moving forward. <laughs> you came in with uh, some, some problems, yeah. starting off with your, with your place of residence. Can you, can you give us Absolutely. a look? Absolutely. And where you're, at with, where you're at right now? Well, I mean, upon coming in, we found out that uh, the trustees had not uh, extended the lease on the property where we were at 20 South Clark Street. And uh, after talking with the management company there, they were telling us that we had to be out by June 1st. Otherwise, we would spend 14000 plus, 150% over that $14,000. Was that a year? Every month. <laughs> a month? $14,000. <laughs> Every month. That was the penalty Holy for not Jesus. having a lease. Holy and God. the bad part about it is that we couldn't renew the lease because they had already leased the property. Wow. So how did you handle that? I mean, what? Well, I mean, immediately we started looking for property, looking at space, and uh, we were all over the city trying to find and locate property. We were uh, working with the attorneys on old union buildings and trying to get some property uh, somewhere where we can have an office. And uh, a member called me one Saturday morning and told me he had some listings that he felt we should take a look at. And we rolled down and got to 16th in Michigan, and it wasn't open that day. So we took a look on the outside. The place looked kind of small, but, you know, I, I told him, listen, we'll go on Monday and take a look. And that's what we did. We looked at it on Monday morning, myself and the financial secretary. We then went back and got the committee and let them take a look. And, you know, I had you go by there and take a look. And, uh, the rest is history, so that's where we are, 1613 South Michigan Avenue. So, so you purchased the place? We bought it. You bought it. It is, uh, and I must say, folks, it is a beautiful place. I got to give you credit. Now, so you were paying 14000 plus a month at the other place. Absolutely. So what are you paying, like uh, 20000 now? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In owning the property, we save. Eight thousand dollars a month. Wow! And that's in owning the property. So, uh, I'll let you pick out my next house, it. man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you run into good. since you've been in there now. You've done quite a quite a lot. You Absolutely. doing some of the things that a president should do. And I've been uh, getting feedback and even talking with you and talking with some of the people now. One of the things that I did when I left office, I kept contact with all the top people in the state and in the city, as you know. Absolutely. And I'm getting good feedback that uh, they respect Local 241 again. They used to respect you guys way back in, the, well, it wasn't way back, I mean, in right. the 90s. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but okay. they started, they are really starting to respect you all again. Now, what's happening? I know you got a lot of people back to work that have been fired and you got some stuff going. Absolutely. Give me, we, we give you know, bringing them back bit. to work. Uh, we had, um, um, arbitrations that were won that basically didn't make any sense when it came to the red lights and now we have a resolve with the red lights where the operator operators won't be discharged after two red lights mm. they'll be given a safety uh, even if it's accelerated to one day suspension they still won't be 
discharged. They have to have four safeties that they can go through, and uh, uh, we're back to dealing with that part of the uh, guidelines. Right. And it was just a common sense approach, and we worked with uh, uh, some guys at the CTA, Vice President Ken Buford and George Cavelli, and uh, we were making positive strides in, in uh, labor and management. But uh, now they're not there anymore. They got new regime, and as you know, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can continue. Yeah, well, that sounds good to me. You guys got contract negotiations coming up. Absolutely. Real soon, I heard. Well, CTA, uh, the tentative agreement, well, we have three. Uh, CTA expires December 31st, and so does the two PACE properties. We have two PACE properties that expire, and right now we're, uh, we're working on a proposal. As a matter of fact, today we met with the attorneys, and uh, we shared 308 and 241's proposals, and we're trying to make them mimic each other and get as close as we can to uh, ask them for the same thing. And it worked out pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. we pretty much uh, uh, got through all of ours. So now we're ready. So we're just waiting on the sister local to get it together and we'll be ready. We got two dates in December. Oh, you got there's some dates set already. Two okay. dates in good. December good. and we're hoping that the CTA uh, will sit down and negotiate. Um, then and, and hopefully we can negotiate a contract for a change. So that's what I'm looking forward to. You have a tremendous amount of people that you represent. Yes. And you have this cool and calm manner about yourself. Now I know you get I know you get mad sometimes. So what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean you held your business yeah. and you be cool about it and right. you have this this demeanor that you uh you know, <laughs> well, you know, you try not to let it break you. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I tell you what, try. Tommy. When I was uh, president, and uh, I had uh, you know quite a few people, thirty six hundred people that I was representing. You you had two to three times more oh, than yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. And uh, so when they get frustrated, you know, I, I, try, I had that same. I try to have that same demeanor you have. You know, that. and but when I'm coming home, I'm mad. And, uh, I come in the house. And, uh, my wife had a little trick, man. She said, well, go to the store and get some bread. Said, okay, I go out and get you lock the doors on me, see, till I cool down. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to tell your secrets, baby, but you know, I just, tell me, to, you know. <laughs> but no, it's, I know it can be trying sometimes, though. Um, Absolutely. And, um, you know, and uh, my advice would be that, you know, you take it, continue to take it uh, a step at a time. Absolutely. But, you are making strides quicker than a lot of um, labor leaders that I've seen before. You know? Okay. But now you got a guy in the state of Illinois. He goes by the name of Bruce Rauner. Oh, yeah. We got G-O-V in front of his name. Absolutely. Okay? So Absolutely. His thing is we want to destroy all these unions, want to right to work state. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a kid uh, wishing for Christmas. I want, a, I want a jet plane and all that. Absolutely. I don't think he's going to get anything that he wants. Can I don't think so that? either. No, when it comes to transit, I mean, we're teaming up with other locals. You know, as you know, we're dealing, we're working with the teachers. We got a rally on uh, November 3rd in Grant Park. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a huge rally, and we got a number of unions coming out. Uh, we got the invite from the teachers, and we're there uh, that night. It'll start at 5, and it'll be over by 7.30. But right now, that's what it's all about, Jerry. It's all about... Uh, bringing all the unions, all the working people together because he's not trying to destroy one union. He wants to destroy them all. Yes. So we have to come together. The members have to come together. We got to unite. Uh, it's a hard job over in 241 because for years they were um, pretty much abused. But now it's kind of coming around. You know, the more mm -hmm. properties I go out on and I talk with the people, I'm finding out that they do want to get involved. So yeah. we got a lot yeah. of things going yeah. on in the local right now, and um, that, we'll be ready. Well, that's great. I, 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 I applaud you guys for what you're doing out there because uh, it's not an easy task. Um, you always have people that uh, look at you with a jundice eye. Always. You know, and, and no matter how well you do, you're going to have that. But you just have to keep moving forward. Absolutely. You represent uh, a great number of people in, in uh, the uh, city of Chicago. Yes, we do. Nothing moves 
unless you guys move. Absolutely. I mean, Chicago can't move no. unless you guys move. So, no. you know, uh, and that's a, a good thing. And I, hopefully, uh, like you say, you can move through your contract with as smooth as you possibly can. Hopefully. I mean, if you can't, then you have to do what you have to do. Absolutely. And, uh, your members, I'm sure, are prepared for that. Right. But I'm looking at your governor. He's cutting off after-school programs. He's, uh, you know, cutting off uh, veterans' benefit. Uh, he's trying to, and, and one guy said it, He's trying to manufacture a crisis yes, he is. so that he can do the things he wants to do. Absolutely. I got to applaud the state uh, representative and the, and the state senate for standing strong. Absolutely. He figures if he cut out all kinds of programs and do all this, you'll buckle to your knees and give me those unions and let me cut their heads off. Right. But they're standing strong. So no. Yes, they are. No, we're going to cut your head off. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy, happy to see that. Yeah. Now, uh, um, he's gone now. He's He was the mayor, uh, Richie Daly, and uh, not so much blaming him because it's not anything that he did, but his nephew, I think his name was Koneko. Vineco. Vineco. Mm -hmm. Came to the uh, CTA pension plan along with other plans and solicited money to invest in what was um, a bogus investment. Absolutely. And I think he got somewhere 14 to $16 million from our pension plan. Right. N never, never, never returned that money. No. Never got any returns <clears throat> on that money. And when they found out it was bogus, somebody gave him the, the, the pipelines, hey, you better get out of there. So he quit. He ran out. Absolutely. And we never, you know, what I'm, what I'm, I guess I'm getting at, Tom, is that we had people sitting on that board that should have been aware of what's going on. They should have did their due diligence. Uh, they didn't. And uh, their fiduciary responsibilities were not met mm -hmm. because they should have known that if you're looking at the mayor's nephew, too close. Absolutely. That's too close. Should not be happening. If I had sent my nephew in there, they would have kicked him out on a rail. Wouldn't have had a word. Wouldn't have had a word. Wouldn't have had a chance. But these people sat there and they did those things. Yes, they did. With our money. It's our money. So, is it any way possible we can get that money back? Or do you, do you think? Well, you know, that was one of the things <coughs> we talked about, uh, you know, when I was campaigning. Uh, I mean, he's not the only one that owes the pension plan money. You know, we, <laughs> we, and if there's any way possible to get that money back, we're going after him to get it. Yeah. Um, you know, but right now, you know, as you know, we got the big fight with yeah, the board. We need these people to do yes. what they're supposed to do. Yes. You know, yeah. I mean, for years they've been getting away with uh, just giving themselves these golden parachutes. Yes. With the money that belonged <laughs> to the people that contri all the contributors, and we represent two forty one represents the largest group. You certainly do. It's our money. You certainly do. You know, and with the sister local involved, I mean, there's no way they should have been getting away with what they're doing. But we're in the process of doing some things to stop them. I Good. believe we'll be Good. successful. Good, and uh, uh, we'll be talking about those things pretty soon. Hopefully. Absolutely. You, know, you can't do it right now. Right. But uh, I applaud you for coming in, doing what you're doing as president, and coming in and doing what you're doing on the pension board right. to make sure that that pension is not only solid for the pensioners out there, but solid for the active members Absolutely. that are on their way to their retirement. Absolutely. And, we, and I really appreciate that, and I'm going to work with you all I can. Yeah, okay. and I just want to tell you, Jerry, uh -huh. you know, the work that you put in to Local 241, I mean, is greatly appreciated. Well, I hear from the members all the time. Yeah. I had a guy ask me last night, you still working with Jerry Williams? I said, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, because I, I need a sounding board. I need to be able to... Um, information get information and when I need it you're always there you have missed a bit stuff it's just that the members appreciate it oh well, greatly appreciate it. Uh, really they, 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 appreciate they greatly it. appreciate it and uh, it, you know we're gonna continue it. to make strides and yes. correcting a lot of the problems yes. That yes. within the 
CTA. I think well, we're going to be okay. Well, you know, let me tell you something, Tom. You're the only man that could get me off my boat because I was out there sailing in my retirement, man. <laughs> you told me, hey, man, we need your help out here. Absolutely. And I was very happy to help, and I'm very happy to help because I am a union person Absolutely. from start to finish. And uh, I grew up that way, and I'm always for that underdog. And I don't like what's going on with, you know, with not only the, our unions, right. but unions in the country, period. They're trying to destroy them. Yes. And all hands on deck is the way I see it. Absolutely. But uh, again, I want to thank you for all you're doing. doing. I know your members want to thank you for it, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. All right? All right. I appreciate it. Appreciate we gonna have, you. We're going to a commercial, and we're going to come right back, and I got some juicy, some more juicy stuff for you. Uh, Tommy <laughs> Sam, y'all. I knew there was something wrong when I saw the police officer creeping up beside me, but I couldn't think of nothing that I had did. So, you know, I, I, and as I that continue that to walk, and I see no them like, from the side of me. We don't smoke marijuana. Uh, 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 police are thinking we criminals, yeah. and that's not true. It's wrong to judge anybody by their skin tone. Because you're a police officer, it doesn't mean you can abuse anybody you want. I just thank my God, you know, how long can this continue? Gentlemen, we got four events here. Basketball, foot race, quiz, and a spelling bee. Whoever has the most points at the end comes out on top. Let's go. And uh, I want to want to bring something to you. You know, I'm always talking to you about the road cops, how road cops are, and you all know you're seeing all this with your own eyes right now. Thank goodness. And uh, you know what bothers me the most is when people say, "Well, you know, if you stop the black on black crime, then maybe they'll stop the the, the police brutality." Uh, that makes me so damn angry. And I try to talk to you about that all the time, let you know that that has nothing to do with it. You got white on white crime, you got Hispanic on Hispanic crime, you got black on black crime, but has nothing to do with the police murdering our children. So, but I do, I, I can't get it across to you, but I, I saw a guy that got that point across the other day, and I just want you to see this uh, brother from Fox, and of all places now, Fox. So would you run that, that, that clip, um, Fox face off. Run that clip for me. since that video went viral. Juan Alex and political consultant Angela Box tackled this one in tonight's Fox Face Off. The spin is, is that she had her phone out, she didn't want to put her phone away, whatever. I can guarantee you, as a teacher, this wasn't the first time this has happened, second off. So in South Carolina this week, a police officer lost his job for doing his job by uh, subduing an unruly student in a classroom. 
I guarantee it. This is no innocent little lamb. And when you have one student, just one, in a classroom, disrupting the class, making life hell for the teacher and the other students, it's impossible for other students to learn. Now, I do agree, the cop went too far, but I don't think he should have lost his job over it. I think it's high time we start addressing the root causes of all this, the disrespect of teachers, this Black Lives Matter movement, this uh, perpetual chip on your shoulder against everybody that's not like yourself. It's got to stop. We've got to address the culture. First of all, let me say that the cop was justified in being terminated, but they should go further. I think the district attorney's office should ind indict him for assaulting that child. Miss Box, nobody supports a disruptive student in a classroom because it stops other kids from learning. But what I do have a problem with is men should never deal and handle a woman like the way that cop handled that little girl. To turn that desk over the way he did, grab her around her neck, then grab that child and throw her across the room, that is unbecoming of a man with decent character and conduct. That's unbecoming of the conduct of a police officer. They, they should have got a school counselor, maybe a therapist on counselor, a a uh, therapist on campus with a school counselor and a mental health officer to come to the school and deal with that child. We don't know what was going on with that kid, but no kid should be disruptive in the learning environment. Now, for you to say that we need to deal with the culture of black kids in school, Let's deal with the culture of these crazy, fanatic white boys who go in schools with guns and shoot and kill everybody. Let me finish. I'm gonna hold on, hold on, wait a minute. That? Wait a minute. Columbine, killing the kids at the elementary school, the shootings in other cities across America have all been crazy little white boys okay. shooting up innocent okay. people. So and let's we, study that and culture. we have the black culture, unfortunately, which has been run, the, the black community has been run by Democrats for the last 60 years and has destroyed the black family. To destroyed initiative, destroyed self-worth. You have kids out there shooting each other. It's not just white kids. Black kids shoot each other but all the time. But wait a minute. But wait a minute. You said address the black culture. No, address the black Let culture. Let me finish, ma'am. The perpetual chip I on your shoulder. I didn't interrupt you. Blame Whitey. Show some manners. I didn't interrupt God. you. Show some respect. Don't tell me a damn thing about the black coaching kids in school when it's white boys that go in school and murder all kind of innocent I'll people. I'll tell you what, when, Don't you, go tell in, me when that. you go into the we inner city... We need to city, study these fanatic white boys. When you go into the inner city and start teaching there, you let me know, and then you can have something to say about it. Ma'am, I went to inner city schools. I My taught there, have, and I taught there. And guess what? At the end of the day, there's wolves in sheep clothing every day teaching black schools. Let me tell you schools. something. How dare you say that to me? It's the truth when it comes to you. Please. You've heard what they think. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I couldn't say it no better. I mean, <laughs> you know, he said it better than I could. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Brother said it better than And that was Fox now. That was Fox TV. You know, so sometimes there's some things on Fox that you want to see. But, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we, we got, <laughs> the audience is cracking up. Right? We, but I tell you what, that's. That's something that you know you, you have to see for yourself, and, and, and you understand. And uh, but I like seeing that because we've got to a point now where we're so afraid to speak up and so afraid to say things that are true until it's, it's frightening to me to see it, especially with younger people. Don't be afraid. I love what they did in St. Louis, you know, with the, with the college and, and some of the Black Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. Love it. But here's a brother that was I think the greatest not only when he was boxing but when he was talking to the public. I think he was the greatest ever. And uh, run that clip for me, run that clip for me, the next clip for me, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. People start to understand exactly what's going on by listening to this gentleman here. Let's, let's have that clip. Now, that was couldn't have been more uh, couldn't have been said any better by uh, Muhammad Ali, and uh, that's the way we talked. And and you know, back then we 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 spoke up, and we want you guys to do the same thing. Now we got a lot of people that are speaking up now. Just keep speaking up. You know you don't have to. You know these guys. You got some nuts running around. Well, we're gonna start a race war. Some hillbillies, and man, that's not gonna happen. We're gonna vote you out. That's the way we're gonna get you. But I'm going to get ready to wrap our show up, and uh, we got some great things coming up next week, uh, some entertainers on next week. But uh, before I go, I want to show you what would happen if Donald Trump became president or one of these other clowns became president. What would happen to your paycheck 
once those taxes are taken out, and how you would react to it. So I want you to run that next clip, and I'm going to show you exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to lie to you yet. That's what's going to happen to you if you elect these guys president. Hey, you've been watching Talk Labor, and like I say every week, keep talking, keep talking, and we'll see you next week. It's time to talk about what's going on in America. It's time to talk about what's going on in the workforce and in the homes of the American middle class. It's time to talk about the status and the future of today's economy. It's time to talk labor with your host, Jerry Williams Sr.